most trusted name in news. Well, we uh, have just received a, a picture from inside uh, the summit which occurred, the summit meeting uh, between uh, the leaders of uh, Great Britain, uh, the United States, uh, Spain, uh, Portugal, uh, who met uh, earlier before uh, having the press conference, which uh, CNN has uh, shown you live as well as replayed just uh, a, a few moments ago. That's a meeting where you see uh, President Bush, Condoleezza Rice. Uh, on the left, you see uh, 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 Tony Blair of, um, of Great Britain um, and uh, a number of other people around the table. Um, that is the first picture we have seen from inside uh, the meeting to discuss the Iraq crisis. Well, our continuing coverage now, obviously some leaders believe diplomacy should be given more time and point out that Iraq seems to be showing better cooperation with UN weapons inspectors. That is their point of view. But President Bush and his allies say Baghdad, Baghdad is still playing a game of deceit and that force is the only thing Saddam Hussein understands or responds to. The curtain's coming down. We can't continue to go like this. And it's unfortunate that there are members of the council who say, just give it more time, give it more time. And the inspections are working. But what's really working is force. Force is slowly causing him to do some things, uh, but he's not doing them because he has changed his basic political strategy. Well, is there a better way? Is there a strategy for ending the standoff in Iraq where everybody wins? William Urey knows a lot about negotiating with people. He is co-founder of the negotiation program at Harvard University, co-author of the books Getting to Yes and Getting Past No. Mr. Urey, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, we only have about three minutes and there's so much we could, could talk to. I, I want to really talk about two different things. One, uh, possibly some sort of negotiated uh, deal with Iraq. On the other hand, some sort of negotiation between U.S. and France, uh, Germany, and, and others uh, to form some sort of coalition, uh, a more unified coalition. Let's talk vis-a-vis -vis Iraq. At this point, is there any kind of settlement uh, that could take place uh, that would satisfy uh, the, the U.S. and uh, Great Britain? From a negotiation point of view, Anderson, I do think there is. I think there's one last best chance, and that's a negotiated exit for Saddam Hussein, in which he and his government and his friends and family would leave peacefully. Uh, the Russians have two planes prepared just for such an eventuality. And from a negotiation point of view, I think there is a possibility. Uh, it would be an extraordinary victory for the world, a real win-win, Saddam out and no war. But Saddam the Hussein has shown, to make it work. Right, Saddam Hussein has shown no indication, uh, many people would say, that he is willing to leave the country. That's right, and of course he would have to say that. But if you put yourself in his shoes for a moment, you have to think, uh, you have to think, how could it be attractive to him? Right now, we've got a policy which is all stick and no carrot. We've, been, we've spent billions of dollars persuading him that's unattractive to stay. Now we have to make it attractive for him to leave. It has to be a victory for George Bush, in which George Bush can say, look, we got what we needed. We, we, got, a, we got safety, we got disarmament, and so on. Saddam is out. And Saddam has to say something like, look, I've made a su supreme sacrifice as a protector of the Arab people. I am stepping down, I'm retiring, I am going to Mecca on an extended pilgrimage. I am going to protect uh, and spare right. the, the people of Iraq from infidels controlling and occupying the country and right. seizing got, our oil. I get it. But, but that's, does, but that's does, what does, needs to happen. Doesn't that notion sort of, uh, isn't that based on sort of the idea that he is a rational actor, that he is sort of making decisions sort of in a rational manner? I mean, he, some might say he's not, you know, Raul Cedros in Haiti, you know, who could be bought off with a, with a condo in, in Panama. He's not that type, but what he is, he's, he's the type of man who could feel he's got a supreme destiny, he's got an enormous ego, and if he feels that this can be a tactical retreat but a strategic advance, here's a man, after all, who's persuaded himself that he won the first Gulf War. So he might be able to persuade himself in what we need to do in these last few days is to get in his hands a very concrete offer so that, and here's a man prone to miscalculation, but he might make this decision just as the bombs are starting to fall so that there's a concrete offer, all he has to do is say yes and this goes into effect. And the UN could help by saying, look, we will go in there and we will provide a temporary administration in which Iraq can be disarmed. Arab countries and the Russians can help even maybe someone watching this TV program might have the, the connections to make this work. I okay. think this is the last best chance for peace. All right, we literally only have like 30 seconds left and, and I, I want to get to this other thing. Is there any way in the next 24 hours, 48 hours, that there might be some sort of negotiated settlement between the United States uh, and France and Germany, some of the other uh, you know, NATO allies who are not uh, really uh, being very allied with us at this time? 
There's always a chance, but I would say the chances are very small, and I would focus really on this, this ability, this extraordinary opportunity, really, when Saddam Hussein's mind is finally concentrated to really persuade him to build him a golden bridge to retreat across. That's the real opportunity right. for the world at this point. All right, uh, William Urey, appreciate you joining us. Sorry the time was so short. It's an interesting topic. Thanks very My much. My pleasure. Well, as for how invading U.S. forces would be received by the Arab world, the leader of Hezbollah says they'll be welcomed with, quote, guns, arms, and blood. Coming up in the next hour, CNN Sheila McVicker will have an exclusive interview with the terror group's leader. It is a fascinating interview. Stay tuned for that compelling story. More complete coverage of the showdown with the Rocks coming up. Why do so many people trust GMAC Real Estate? It's because our agents offer premier service. A commitment to service that caters to your specific needs. Which means whether you're buying or selling a home, we'll listen to you.